Hey there, YouTubers. So we have i9 10850K. We're going to do some different benchmarks. Um, you know, some of you might not like the ones I've selected, but these are uh, some of the ones I, I use. So we'll start with uh, Intel's XTU. And one of the reasons to start with this is just so you guys can see some of the info on the computer I'm using. So let's start with system info. We'll go back there in a second. There it is. Uh, base speed 3.6 gigahertz. Of course, it's going to get well over 5 gigahertz in this video. 32 gigs of RAM we've got here. It's uh, running at 3200 megahertz. Two sticks of 16 gigs. RTX 2060 Super. And the awesome Gigabyte Eris Z490 Elite AC motherboard. What else do you care about? Well, if you care about what I'm using for Windows, Windows Home. So, basic tuning. This is what these are set at. We'll uh, eventually adjust this. Now, advanced tuning. This is, uh, you know, might be worth going to this video in case you wanted to know what the cores are. So here's 10 of them. This is, of course, an unlocked processor. Uh, by the end of this video, I will set all these to uh, 52. Maybe not the end, but we're going to do um, three different benchmarks and defaults and then with a core overclock. I have not sat down and messed with the core voltage to uh, tune that in, but uh, that's what we're going we're gonna to do here. Okay, Now... Currently using a NOC 2 140 millimeter fan, single tower. Uh, sometimes I put a second fan on there. This this video we're just going to go with one. So benchmarking. Let's go ahead and hit it. Well, actually, before I go to benchmarking, power limits are set to unlimited, right? So you're going to see uh, probably something close to 200 watts down here. All right. Let's go over to benchmark. This should be a pretty high score. Now, I have had a few i9s. Um, I say a few, a couple of other i9s, I guess. We've had a bunch of i7s, and this is definitely going to be the most powerful CPU we've had on the channel. And of course, if we had one of the new AMDs, you know, another story. Whether they're any better at gaming is also, you know, up for uh, argument. 4010, so I believe that is the highest score I have hit. Now you do see the highest CPU temperature there, 71. It's a little, um, actually at this default settings, that's a little concerning. 155, 148, so... We're going to go ahead and uh, boost this up. I might just go a little gradual, folks. Um, and try this. Now, normally, if you do all core, you'd come in here, adjust this. I'm going to bump it up one. Usually, if when we get to uh, basically 5.2 gigahertz, if we get that far, we would um, have this three uh, less than that, right? So we'll go with that for now. That's a matter of tinkering. Can't say, you know, any of my settings are, are that great. Like, you can sit here and, and optimize stuff for a while and find that one big number. Um, but it might not translate into to better gaming. There's potentially that issue. Now, certain games like Fortnite, the better your single core scores are, the better Fortnite's going to be. And so, messing with that first, second core somewhere in there will get you. Uh, will get you there. So I think we were 4010 a second ago. 4172. So quite a boost, right? And we see temp is going up. Maximum processor frequency 5.02. So it's getting a bit hot, folks. Um, may not be able to drive this as far as I would like to have. 
Now, we can cut back on this. Let's do 5.1 all cores. I don't think, honestly, don't believe that we're going to be able to get there with the CPU cooler. Um, awesome CPU cooler. We probably need a second tower, maybe a second fan even. All right, so I like to check the temps. Let's drop down. Now I do have a water water cooler here. I've got one back in Virginia. Either one of those would, you know, probably drive us a little further. But for those of you that like air coolers like I do, simple, less parts, less concern of failure. This is the way to go. Alright, so we achieved a maximum process frequency of 5.10 gigahertz, 4322, and the temperature actually dropped down a little bit. So you you know you could sit here and play with this stuff all day, folks, and um, maybe you know hit some bigger numbers. I'm gonna do it one more time. So before I change this setting, I think we'll run uh, Cinebench, which will save me some time. So one thing to note, you know, if you start hitting thermal throttling, you're losing performance. Power limit throttling. We have 750 watts here, so we're pretty good. We did hit 191 there, 184. And I think this is actually lower a lower score than it was and I can honestly I can feel the heat folks um, the fan is blowing off of the CPU cooler onto me and it it actually warmed up in that vicinity a little bit so that's what you get there let's go ahead and do Cinebench now this first score is going to be higher because it is with a uh, you know, overclock on it. Oh, what was the temp that we hit there? 88, so it got a little warmer. We we could go back and hit each one of those, get them to 52x, and maybe get an all-core 52. I may, I may come back and do this with a uh, second fan, though, as well. So, all right, let's hit run. Now I fully expect this to be the highest score I have ever gotten. Um, you see the i9 10900F, which I own, 5940. I also have a 3900X. I th think I've had a higher score than what's shown there. i7 10700K I have, which is in the low, let's say 5300 range. And then 10700 was, you know, right around 5000. And then we just did a 10600 KF, which was 3754. So this thing cranked out pretty quick. Um, 6539. So it actually did not get to, did not catch up to the Threadripper 1950X. But it, you can see it's definitely better in a 10900F. Quite a bit better, right? So let's run this again without the overclocks. And hopefully I can remember. These were 52, 52. This should have been... This is 50. Oops. This guy is 49. 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, okay. Apply on that. So you mess with the core voltage, you will uh, be able to dial this in better. Um, so I think this was at 43. So that's, you know, we would get the most performance. If I came back and tootled 
messed around with that or even just Googled it. Um, we'd get some better better stuff, right? All right, let's run this again. Let's check our temperature. So 31. It's about in that spot. Oh. All right, we're hitting it again. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking about 6,200. It is amazing watching this in when you see a um, Pentium or Celeron how slow it is to do this and then this thing just cranking away and boom 6138 so um, not really that much better than the 10900F for for this. And to be honest with you, the 10900F, if you adjust just the base clock frequency, you would be able to hit this. Of course, I could do the same thing with this processor. Um, we could go in here. Let's let's go 102.9. We should be able to beat that. Of course, that assumes the computer doesn't shut off on us. So 6138, and we had a, uh, it doesn't show it, but it was right underneath this guy. So I'm going to run it again. Let's see if we can beat 6138 here. And wow, same score. That's surprising. Um, Chris, if you're over here tracking what happened during that time period, temperatures, yeah, they're about the same. Max core frequency, or excuse me. Yeah, they tapped out 4.8, so didn't really. Uh, Surprisingly, it didn't do anything for that. Lock processors, usually it's guaranteed increased performance. All right. So, unless I miss something. All right. So, I have already done the next, the user bench for... For the default setting. So, I'm going to run this with user bench and we'll look at the uh, the default while this is going on in the background now of course we may raise the CPU usage but that's okay so this was the uh, the defaults that we got um, highest score I've had for the RTX 2060 Super 109 so I can tell this is gonna be a heck of a gamer desktop score Really surprised the workstation score. They they must have adjusted numbers because something like this back in the day would have shown a much larger number. Considering the fact I've got uh, the way they used to compute it was really related to the RAM and the solid state drives. So they've adjusted that number. But you know, very solid gaming computer right here, right? So defaults you can see very high single core score. Um, we you know we could have tried to get that up a little higher maybe we'll see a higher number here there's our graphics card performing about as expected 
Now this actually surprises me that we're in the 85th percentile because the overclocked ones are usually in this in this region. So, so our drives we've got um, this PCIe 4.0 does not work in all aspects with this motherboard. It does not support PCIe 4.0 yet, but it still runs pretty good, right? Those are still pretty solid numbers. And then our RAM, which uh, is okay as well. So we'll uh, minimize that. Now this is uh, finishing up. At least hopefully it is. So the fact it has multiple drives is slowing it down a little bit. All right, maybe a lot. We're almost there, though, folks. 17 minutes into the video. Almost there. And this will... This is going to do it once this is finished. Alright, so wow. We actually had a worse gaming score. Workstation score is worse. Only the desktop score stayed the same. Why is that? That's a good question. Does this make sense to you all? This score is higher, which would make it even more effective for um, Fortnite. This score is the highest I've had. I believe this beats even the 3900X. Um, yet, something in here... This is one of the reasons people don't like user benchmark. Um, so somewhere in here we have a bad score. Mm, you know, in comparison. <laughs> uh, what is it? This middle, this middle score, right? The first two, this is higher, this is higher that guy is worse and so that somehow drove this down right it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, how my graphics card do graphics card scored a little worse and these are about the same right so and even the RAM was worse but there you go folks there's the benchmarks thanks for checking out the video please like please subscribe thank you